Horace Barbie is a reclamation and it's also a spirit. The book Horace Barbie is about my life. It's been described as this global saga of a life or of a trans Filipina who was born and raised in the Philippines who grew up in a very, very different culture where gender fluidity has been part of the norm and with the influences of, you know, Catholicism and transgender beauty pageants. I became a pageant diva. When I was 15 years old, when I started joining transgender beauty pageants in the Philippines, I was still in high school. They started calling me the end of like a horse. So it was an insult. Tiger Lily saw me on the stage and you know, just the way the light was hitting me, I was wearing my red iconic gown. She's like, yeah, you're so elegant on stage, the way the light was hitting you, there's something almost like this mythical energy. You like look like a horse barbie. And when I moved to New York City to pursue a career in fashion, as someone that's been out and proud in Asia, I had to go back in a closet in a, in a way, you know, in America. I had to be, we call it stealth, meaning I was in the fashion industry where my model agent did not know I was transgender. But there's a limit to visibility, I mean, particularly for trans people. When a lot of folks are saying that let's just be trans people should just come out and be visible. For trans people, it's dangerous. You know, the more visible we become, the more our lives are in danger because in a culture like America who does not grapple with its long trauma of this very rigid gender binary. And here we are, trans people proudly existing as we are. One just reacts to violence. Worst Barbie as a spirit, somehow I needed to remind myself that I was that girl back in the Philippines. I had it. Well, that you know that there is a spirit that you're surrounded with that wants you to be your most best self. Do it. Keep doing that and keep, keep living your life because they want us to disappear. We cannot disappear. We're going to stay here.